One of the biggest concerns people have when they think about making the switch to an electric vehicle is what do they do if they have a problem with their battery? It is the most expensive part of the car and having a battery replacement can cost up to $15,000, which tops the list of most expensive car repairs, at least when comparing it to most other normal cars. And I know 15,000 is just too expensive for me because I have two hungry babies and because of those hungry babies, this video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. I tried Trade last year and got hooked on their awesome coffee selection and delivery method. If you love coffee like I do and wanna try a bunch of different flavors from a bunch of different places, you should try it too by by using my link below drinktrade.com slash dirty tesla by using that link you'll get thirty dollars off your first order you answer some questions about what kind of coffee you like how you like to prepare it and then they will give you some selections that are delivered straight to your door. As you try flavors, you can rate each one and zone in on your perfect flavor, or you can just switch it up every time if you wanna pick what different coffees you wanna drink. Right now, Trade is offering my viewers a total of $30 off their first order, plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash dirtytesla, or click the link in the description below. This offer won't last forever, so be sure to take advantage while you can. Get started by taking the simple quiz at drinktrade.com slash dirtytesla and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash dirtytesla for $30 off. Make sure to use my URL and click the link below so they know I sent you. Now the good news is most people will never have to worry about this because first of all, the batteries in a Tesla do last an extremely long time, but if they have any type of problem, Tesla has a warranty on their batteries up to 150,000 miles or eight years on the Model S and X, 120,000 miles on long range Model 3 and Model Y, and standard range Model 3 gets a 100,000 mile battery warranty. Like with any mass produced product, there will be some small percentage of failures. So what does happen if the battery on your Tesla fails at some point? We're gonna answer that question today. Hey everybody, my name is Chris. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and get subscribed. And luckily or unluckily for my buddy Paul, this did happen to him, luckily for us, so we can check out the experience. Unlucky for him, that his battery failed, but the good news is uh, he is all set up now with a new battery, but we're gonna go through kind of his experience. We'll go through how he treated his car, how many miles he had, what car he had, which Tesla, and everything, so we can kind of see what he went through, what happened, why it happened possibly, um, and then how he got it resolved through Tesla. Okay, so the first thing to talk about is his car. When he dropped it off at Tesla, he had 93,225 miles on the car. He drives a standard range plus Model 3. His VIN is 296737, if you care to look up that vehicle. It was built March of 2019, and he uses that car, as you can tell, for his charging habits on his battery. He did go to a 90% charge, but only when his state of charge dropped below 40%. So every two to three days, he would plug in his car and charge it back up to 90%. And those days in between, he just wouldn't have it plugged in. Now for any battery you look at, going above 90% and below 10%, those are extremes on the battery that can damage it or hurt it or at least reduce its usable lifetime. So I asked how much was he above and below 90%. He said typically only during road trips, which is how most Tesla owners are, but he did charge it to 100% a couple of times at night because he forgot that he had the limit all the way up to 100% and then he would drive it immediately the next morning. So it did sit for a few times at 100%, but it sounds like maybe just two or three times. It's not like he was doing this all the time. And then his acceleration habits, he had a lead foot. So he was using that car to the fullest, uh, which is what you do when you have a Tesla. It's fun to accelerate in them, so why not? Now, when did he first notice something was wrong with his battery? Now, Scan My Tesla, which is an app that shows you way more data than you would normally see, was hooked up on this vehicle. So the first issues that were noticed was the cell voltage was really imbalanced. Now, this is something that a normal user who's not using an app like this would never see. It's just not possible to see that in the car. Although if you wanna buy a device like that, you can hook it to your car and get all of these stats. But for most people, it's not something that you really need to check on that often, mostly if you're just nerdy and into that stuff. So for a short time, the voltage imbalance in some of the cells was 400 millivolts. And then the BMS did kind of fix that and got the imbalance down to about 60 millivolts, uh, but it never got back to its normal imbalance, which was less than 10 millivolts. And this is all the cells in the pack, the thousands of little batteries that are in there. They should all be really close together in their voltage to keep the battery healthy, make sure it charges appropriately, doesn't discharge too much. And this is where things uh, started to look bad. So how quickly was this issue identified? Was Paul at risk of getting stranded with his Tesla where all of a sudden the battery would just start working? Well, luckily, no. He first 
started seeing issues a couple of months before Tesla officially diagnosed it. He saw that his 100% range was about 200 miles, whereas the standard range is supposed to be closer to 240 miles. And he saw that that 100% 200 mile range was dropping rapidly. So when Paul saw that his battery might be having a problem with his range going down, his voltage imbalance, he contacted Tesla service and he said, I think something's going on with my battery. They did their remote diagnostic and they said, nope, you're all good. Don't worry about it. About three days after that, he then got an error message on his car. He contacted Tesla service and then Tesla service said, oh, okay, well, bring it in. <laughs> you got a problem with your high voltage battery that we need to take care of. Now, leading up to that, they said that he could come drop the car off and they would give him Uber credits. They did not have a loaner at the time. Or they said you can keep the car, although you will rapidly experience range degradation at this point. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to keep it or not. Paul decided to keep the car, uh, but then the range was dropping so fast uh, that he didn't think it was a good idea. That was then followed by him not being able to charge the car anymore. So he would plug the car in and it would charge a little bit or not at all. And it would just say charging complete. Um, and so he wasn't getting any range. And so he decided to take it to the service center and drop it off so that the car wasn't stranded somewhere because it could no longer charge. And then he'd have to get a tow and probably pay more money and do all this stuff. In fact, the pack became so limited that 200 miles at 100% quickly turned into just 165 miles worth of range at 100% and it would no longer charge. So he'd plug the car in and it would say charging complete no matter what, even down to 26% state of charge. He would plug the car in and it would still say charging complete. And that's when he decided to drop it off at Tesla so he wouldn't end up with a car that was no longer drivable uh, before he could get it to service. I will say though that pretty nice that the most catastrophic failure you can have on this vehicle, which is the battery uh, going bad, you still have time to try to use it and be like, okay, never mind, I'm just gonna take it in there. So it's nice that the pack still had enough range to drive it to where it needed to be and wait for service. Now, because this car was at 93,000 miles, it was still under the full battery and powertrain warranty. So all of this work was completed completely for free from Tesla. Now, the bad part is how long did it take? Tesla is known for having bad service or slow service, not exactly my experience, I usually have a good time, but uh, this one was four weeks from diagnosis to returned vehicle. So not terrible for such a big part to be changed out um, for the car to be fixed that long. Now, Tesla did offer $2,500 worth of Uber credits, uh, which depending on you know the way you live could be really annoying or really not that big of a deal. Now, how much would this have cost if the car was not under warranty? This would have been a $15,000 repair plus the cost of labor on top of that. So really, really expensive, not something you want to deal with outside of warranty. So that is something you should think about if you're buying an older Tesla. Can you afford a $15,000 repair on a battery? Now, again, the percentage of cars that this happens to is extremely low, but it is a possibility to happen. And typically more expensive car, more expensive repairs. That's really any car you're going to see. Uh, but this is a really big one. Now, what is going to happen to that old battery that came out of the car that failed? Well, I guess what happens is Tesla takes that battery, they send it back to headquarters, and they do some additional testing on it to find out why it failed to improve future battery packs and learn more from the battery pack. And then from there, it's actually recycled into raw materials and will be used for new batteries. So that's really good news that Tesla is taking those old batteries and recycling them to be used in new cars. The new pack that was put into the vehicle isn't exactly new. It is a refurbished pack uh, and it comes with 46.6 kilowatt hours of nominal capacity. It is supposed to be 52.4 kilowatt hours brand new. So it does itself have a little bit of degradation. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly where Tesla would get a battery like this, maybe from a totaled car or something like that. The new 100% range for this refurbished pack is 214 miles, 214 versus the 240 miles advertised new. So definitely a used pack that's uh, seen some activity on it, uh, whatever that means exactly. Uh, but it did come straight from Tesla. So hopefully it should be a good pack to last uh, well over <laughs> another 100,000 miles. Now, one thing I found very strange and I actually still think is incorrect to this day, but what uh, Tesla said is this new battery does not have any type of additional warranty on it. It is still covered under the original 100,000 mile eight year warranty. And I, it seems kind of strange to me because obviously this pack is brand new, not brand new, but it's newly installed from Tesla. So you'd think there'd be some type of, you know, maybe 50,000 mile or even 25,000 mile four year warranty or something like that. Uh, but to be covered under that original warranty, I mean, that doesn't do much good, especially when this car's already at 93, probably more than that now, thousand miles, uh, this pack is going to be out of warranty really quickly. And so I personally uh, don't like that. I would be pretty concerned, but at the same time, I'm, I'm hoping it was a miscommunication or somebody just wasn't sure exactly what the coverage was because that really doesn't make much 
much sense to me. Now, Paul's thoughts after getting his car back, what was his experience? Is he happy, satisfied, whatever? He's happy to have his car back, and he said he's gonna try to be more careful with this new pack, uh, but no promises. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you would do. I mean, I would also charge my pack to 90%, especially he's not doing it every day. Um, actually, to be fair, I typically charge mine to 80%, and then I'll charge up to 90 if I need some more range or something that day. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like this car was abused in any way. We live in Michigan. Uh, it is, you know, whatever. It gets really cold and then pretty hot in the summers, but nothing too extreme. Now, I want to stress again, this is extremely rare. I've been driving my Teslas for three and a half years now. I've talked to tons of different owners. I've been the president of the Tesla Owners of Michigan Club for a couple of years now. I talk to people online from all over the world because of YouTube and Twitter and stuff. And this is the first person I've talked to who's had a battery failure like this. I have talked to or heard of other people that, you know, maybe had some debris on the road, um, disabled their battery. I think I've heard of that twice now. Um, so these things are extremely rare, but if it does happen to you, which of course it's a possibility, it's a big deal. Uh, especially if you're out of warranty, it's not going to be fun. Now, another note here from Paul's battery pack, he has put over 13,000 kilowatt hours of DCFC fast charging on the pack and over 17,000 kilowatt hours of AC charging. So like at home, uh, it was well used and he had no degradation of charging speed on version three superchargers for a standard range model three that goes up to 176 kilowatts. So he was still seeing that until the very end even with all of that charging, all of those miles. So that's really good because we know some of the older Model S's and Model X's, they were seeing some degradation of charging speeds after lots of fast charging or just after a lot of miles were racked up. Um, they were getting their peak charging speeds lowered when those older cars already had lower charging speeds to begin with. So it's really good that this pack still had its peak charging speed. Now, a pretty big question from Paul here for Tesla. Since the battery is a major component of the vehicle, in the future, will Tesla establish a core deposit for the use packs to help customers absorb a bit of the cost of the new pack, seeing as they can recycle them into new packs. And Tesla, of course, is getting some amount of value in these battery packs that they're getting back from customers. It's not like some small broken part in a car where you toss it and put in the new one. There is a lot of components in this battery. Some of those components will still be good. Tesla will also be recycling pieces of this battery. So there's value there for Tesla. So it would be really nice if Tesla could start some type of program so the battery that they're getting back from a repair like this could have some value for the customer because these costs are really expensive. I mean, this is like 30% of the car if you were to buy it today. And of course, if you bought this same car a few years ago, it was much cheaper. So <laughs> you're getting you're getting up there like 50% of the cost of the car for this one component. And if Tesla could do something to help customers that are in this predicament, especially out of warranty, I think it would really go to help the brand, help EV adoption in general, uh, because this is something people are gonna think about, even though, again, 99% of people will never have any type of experience with something like this. It may still be in the back of some people's minds and could drive them away from electric vehicles knowing that this potentiality is there. So in my opinion, Paul had a pretty decent experience here. He did have to go without his car for a few weeks there, but he got a new battery pack under warranty. Tesla took care of it as soon as they saw that error message, as soon as they saw on their end that something was wrong. It would have been nice if the data that was presented to them could have been used and got the process started a couple of days earlier. But seeing as there was only three days in between uh, the data from Paul and the data from Tesla, uh, maybe they would have done something with that anyway, and they just didn't have time. Hopefully this experience can continues to be extremely rare for people and hopefully it doesn't scare anyone away from electric vehicles because any car can have an expensive repair, maybe not $15,000 unless you're talking, you know, Lamborghinis or something. But in general, the more expensive the car, the more expensive potential repairs you'll be dealing with. If you have any more questions about this, please leave those down below. I don't know if Paul will be down there talking to you or I can answer those questions for you. I hope you enjoyed this one and you will see me in the next video.